Hi everyone, thank you for tuning into this latest weather update and outlook from the National Weather Service Office in San Diego. Hey, have you checked out our webpage lately? Weather.gov is our webpage uh, seen behind me. So let's get going here and talk about the next heat wave in Santa Ana wind that could affect us in Southern California. Okay, today we had some Santa Ana winds and they're shown on the map here. Uh, you can plot these as well on a map from our weather.gov page. I provided the link on here. It was a weak event, nonetheless, number two for this season or this fall. Now the water year, the water year was very wet across central Southern California, top 10 wettest across that region, some locations the wettest in the dark green. We had 150 to 200% of normal, so one and a half to two times the precipitation for the water year. The water year again is October 1 through September 30th. Some of the numbers are shown here, and I wanna highlight a couple of those numbers. I wanna highlight Palomar Mountain, number one, wettest year on record, but we had locations like Big Bear Lake and Oceanside, not far off, number two very significant water year we just experienced 2022-2023. Okay, uh, what's coming up? I just mentioned we had a Santa Ana wind. Another one is expected. So we're, after this Santa Ana wind, temperatures are going to warm up, but they're going to warm up even further middle of October. So we're looking at around October 18th going into October 22nd. Uh, what's going to set up is a similar pattern, a little more amplified, so stronger. Upper level ridge, that's the warm, hot air. Uh, and then the offshore flow, high to low pressure, that's the Santa Ana. Uh, you combine those two, you get really warm conditions in addition to the Santa Ana winds. Warm also means dry. So we're looking at mid-October. It looks like the event will peak out around the 19th or 20th. That'll be the hottest temperatures and also the strongest offshore flow. And then it'll stay really warm uh, for the next couple days after this. Upper level ridge, and then down near the surface, high to low pressure or that offshore flow that prevents our sea breeze from cooling us. The outlook is shown here. Temperatures expected across all of California to be above average or much above average for that period in mid-October. It looks like the warm air lingers, as I mentioned, even after the Santa Ana wind. So the warm conditions linger 22nd, 23rd of October and no sign of any precipitation. When we look further out, uh, rounding off into early November, we can see warmer than average conditions expected and really no signal for precipitation. So in summary, we're looking at a Santa Ana wind. This one should be more significant than what we just experienced already. And this is mid-October, so between the 18th and the 21st. But the warm temperatures could last all the way through the 24th. Okay, uh, why are Santa Ana winds important? So usually this time of year, we have not received much rainfall after a long, dry summer. This year was different, though. August was record-breaking wet in a lot of areas because of Hillary, the rain that fell on August 20th. Now, we had a very wet season, as I showed. But what's the fuel moisture like right now? When we look at the dead fuel moisture, those weeds, vegetation, grasses, um, they are now dropped a little bit below average with the recent warm temperatures and the first two Santa Ana wind events. They're not record low and they're not severely dry but the dead fuels are below average. Now, some of our live fuels remain uh, above average, uh, especially compared to the past five years. Okay, now what about the outlook for the upcoming winter? Some of the key messages to take away. El Nino is here. El Nino is expected to last through the upcoming winter. Now, last water year was record breaking and much above average, including the 13 atmospheric rivers that affected Southern California. The outlook coming up though is not so confident. Uh, we are expecting average to slightly above average precipitation 
with about half the atmospheric rivers that we saw last year. Now, El Nino does not mean or guarantee precipitation. It never has, um, nor does it mean bigger storms. But El Nino does affect the jet stream and does consolidate the jet stream, but it's a matter of where it sends those storms. Where is the hose going to be pointed? And there remains a lot of uncertainty if it'll remain pointed consistently over Southern California. Now, uh, the last strong El Nino that we had, even stronger than what we're currently seeing, was 2.6 Celsius, and that was 2015-16, and that winter was dry and warm. In fact, compared to average, driest in the United States in Southern California. So the next outlook is going to be updated on October 19th, so stay tuned for that. Here's the El Nino currently, and we know it's there. We can see it on satellite as shown here, much warmer than average along the equator. Now we also see marine heat waves and large areas of above average water, reflection of the past dry years and the lack of jet stream over the Pacific, but that warm water uh, is present across much of the central and western Pacific as shown here, in addition to the warm El Nino water. You can look at past years, okay, and in the record books, the wettest year for California, the Sierra Nevada, was not an El Nino. It was 2016-17. The most recent year that was very wet, in a lot of cases record rain and snow, was not an El Nino. It was La Nina. But you can go back to 1997-98, uh, and that year was a strong El Nino, and it was wet. So correlation is far from exact. What is El Nino? As a recap, it's the warming of the waters along the equator. It's very normal. It's a cycle every three years. What it does too is it shifts the winds. Um, and this warm water and shift in the winds eventually can affect the atmosphere or the storm track and jet stream. Now, when we look out into this upcoming winter, uh, we see a slower start to the winter. So we don't see a signal of the ocean and atmosphere together yet. And what I mean by that is upcoming next couple of weeks, we see a large signal of warmer temperatures with a period potentially cooling down in late October, early November. We also so don't see a significant precipitation, um, though um, there is some indication that in early November or late October, we could see some precipitation, but overall dry. Now, when we look into the heart of the winter, and this is what we call the winter outlook, December through February, we do have a signal of wetter than average, uh, even here in Southern California. Let's take a look closer. It doesn't show up early on in November to December, but we start seeing it in December and especially February and March. So the latter half of the winter, we start seeing that green creep up, which would be above average. That potentially could be an indication that the jet stream is going to focus on us for a while on the second half of the winter. Doesn't mean the first half will be bone dry. In fact, we'll see a couple storms for sure. But um, the winter looks like it's weighted towards the latter half at this time. The ocean and El Nino conditions are present as described. This is updated every week by the Climate Prediction Center. And so we focus on this area along the equator. We can see El Nino is present. The official outlook, which will be updated on October 19th, looks like this. Slight chance of above average in Southern California for the core of the winter, December through February. That does not mean it'll necessarily be wet there's still considerable odds and uncertainty. We still could be average or even drier than average based on this prediction. So stay tuned for the next update on October 19th.